far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. It's the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners were slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross.
trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I sing for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me oh so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last Turn your Bibles with me out there to the book of Romans chapter 6. And I will be reading from verse 1 to verse 14. So when you find it, you can just type amen. Hallelujah. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know he not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ uh, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, so even we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with with him knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more death had no more dominion over him for in that he died he died unto sin once but in that he liveth he liveth unto God likewise reckon he also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that he should obey it in the loss thereof neither yield he your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God 14 and ending for sin shall not have dominion over you for he are not under the law but under grace here ended a portion of God's holy word we honor it by saying praise be to God God bless you tonight as our pastor will come and share what the Lord has laid on his heart for us tonight be blessed in Jesus name hallelujah
Good night, everyone. Praise God. Good night, good night, good night, good night. Praise God. Praise Him, praise Him. Tonight, indeed, we are back in line with you tonight. Praise God in our deliverance service. And, um, and we want it to be a blessing unto you. Praise God. And as you take time out to join us, and for those that don't know, we are coming from the Faith Prophetic Ministry, the quote of the Walton Park Road. Oh, that's the sanctuary. Tonight we are not in the sanctuary. We are at another location. Praise the name of the Word of God and to you. So I hope and trust that you will incline your ears unto the word of God. We're about to pray. Praise God. You know that um, I cannot come to you without praying unto the Lord to make it possible in this broadcast that your life will be impacted. I don't want to come here to try to project me and um, leave you out God. I, I want to project God and leave me out. So Jesus said we must say our Father which art in heaven. So at all time we must respect and um, hallow him and praise him and glorify him. Let us pray. Loving and holy Father, tonight we come. We glad for this opportunity. We glad for your power. We glad, praise God, that Jesus Christ is up and running. He's not in the grave anymore. He's not on the cross anymore. He's at walking as how we used to walk before. But now he moved by the Spirit of you, o Lord. And tonight, as we come, Lord, to do this broadcast. We pray, God, that you will anoint us even now and anoint, O oh God, the word that will be going forth, that has it reached the soul of your people, has it reached the eyes of your people and the ears of your people, then, God, their life will be impacted by the power of your Holy Ghost. Deliver us tonight out of, O oh God, the body of death, the body of sin, the body, O oh God, that is causing everything in our life to be troublesome. So tonight, O oh God, you know the body that we house into, that it is a sinful body, and it must die tonight in the name of Jesus. In the context, O oh God, that the nature of our flesh that is alive, we want them to die tonight, that the spirit will take full control of our life, O oh God, that we will be able to live for you and to able to praise you and to glorify you. So tonight, O oh God, bless our service, bless our broadcast, and bless your people. Touch your people that is out there that need to be healed tonight and deliver their soul out of sickness and death and hell. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together. Praise God. When somebody clapping, what about you and Facebook? What about you and pre-record YouTube? What about you two can clap your hand for Jesus? Can somebody praise God? We are back in the books of Romans chapter 6. There are many times we preach and teach and we move away from many things because the devil don't want us to know the importance of what we need to know from the word of God. Can somebody say amen to that? So the devil makes certain that he gets you involved in the reading, but he don't get you involved in the understanding and the revelation and the true interpretation of how you must apply the word unto your life. But he let you read it and he let it sound good to your ears and I believe that's it. It is not so, my brothers and sisters. 
we have to look and look and look and look and look until we have been delivered. So tonight, praise God, we are going to ask questions. They are pastors asking questions, and we are going to answer them. And you probably want a team that you can able to document this broadcast with. And the team is, we must dead to sin, alive to God. Can we be dead to sin tonight? And alive to God tonight, we can do it. If you don't know how to do it, then listen. And you will be able to understand that you can do it. Although it did seem impossible when first you hear it that, oh, you must dead to sin. How can I dead to sin? Well, we are going to look at it, how this can unfold. Number life tonight that we can deliver from the body of sin and live for God. So watch this. So the question asked for you that just joined us, Romans chapter 6, and we are at verse 1. Praise God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Can somebody praise God? I just want to remember, just take you back in chapter 5. Chapter 5. You need to know what takes place in chapter 5. And you must understand what takes place in chapter 5. That what took place in chapter 5. And that other than the one man sin. And cause a death to pass up on all humanity. But there is a good news in chapter 5. That we always run over and never catch this. And watch this. I just want you to understand. Nevertheless, death reign from Adam to Moses. I want you to make note of that tonight because many of us don't understand that what the Bible just said. The death reign right from Adam unto Moses. Why stop Moses? Praise the name, Lord. Why it stop at Moses and does not continue? So we're going to go back to number six because we don't want to stay in number five. We just want you to understand this that there is a cut off. And there is a stop point for death to reign over your life. Get that in your mind tonight. It's already cut off. It reigns to Moses. Even over those folks that never sin in the transgression of other death reign until the time. But now death, I want you to get this clear in your mind. Death does not rule over us anymore. Let that soak for a while because you're not getting it. Death does not rule over us anymore. It has been stopped by Jesus Christ our Lord. Get that in your mind. He destroy the body of sin. He destroy the strength. Because the strength of sin is the law. And he fulfill the law of death and destruction. And got the victory over death and hell. So I can declare it tonight to every one of you. Every one of us, I am not under the govern and power of death. But I am under the control of Jesus that give life. Can somebody praise God? I said the man that give life. He is the one that is over me now. Not that. And we're here tonight. Let me go back to number six now. Yes, we want to stay at six. 
And that's why Paul asks the question, after such a great thing, one man disobedient and cause sin and death upon the life. One man obediency have caused life to exist out of death. Can somebody praise God? And we want to tap into that. We want to grab a hold of that. Because if there is life, I want it. And there and 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 death have no more power over me. So I don't have to pay debt anymore. What I need to do tonight is to pay life some mine. And I charge him, everyone that listen. I want you to stop pay debt. Come with me, somebody, and start to pay attention and to life. Don't look at the grave because the grave is just a tunnel for you. So don't pay that no mind, but pay how can I get life? How can I maintain life tonight? And Paul, yes, and Paul said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God abounds become nothing? And I said no. And I want you to say no. I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm going to say no to sin. Can you say no to sin tonight? Are we here tonight because debt have no dominion over me. Debt have no more power over me. And debt is not ruling or govern my life anymore. Can somebody praise God because there is a Savior. There is a Jesus that sacrifice is life for you. You know sacrifice life? He gave his life for you. That you may have life. You cannot afford for the goodness of God. The kindness of God. To appear like it is nothing. Is that like some person. You have done the best for them. And it's like your best mean nothing. Can somebody praise God. Watch chapter 2. Verse 2, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin, can somebody say, I'm dead to sin? Are you dead to sin tonight? Can somebody praise God? We are going to, you know the reason why I'm here? I want to get you out of sin. I want to get you in the spirit. I want you to cut loose for sin and get right with God and get it right now. And don't let the devil believe that death still reign over you. There's somebody that is still in the world. That is still happening but it don't have the power over you. Jesus has given you the victory over death and hell. So bear that in your mind tonight. That God forbid it. You don't have to do it. You don't have to obey it anymore. Just watch it. Dead to sin. That means you accept the free gift of God. That means you accept the resurrected Christ in your heart. That means you are working for God. So that means God control your body and come and bring your body alive. So that means your body is dead to sin. So there is no desire for sin. There is no passion for sin there is no fire burning inside you for sin all what is in you is to live for God as he give you life watch this so watch this that our dead to sin live any longer therein you are not going to live any longer in it because you are dead to it get that in your mind then we move on Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. How, how you baptize? How do you baptize? Think about that tonight. Ask yourself the one question. Did I baptize 
into Jesus Christ or I don't, you better. I charge you tonight. I don't care who you want to be or who you want to associate with. You must follow the protocol of the word of God. If your body have been dead to sin, the only way this can dead to sin, you baptize in Jesus Christ. You baptize into his death. That means you believe in him, right? Watch this. So just as how Jesus died and sin have no more power over him, praise the Lord. I soon fix that up for you. Because you don't get this. I want you to get this in your mind. I hear many people have said many things. But Jesus did not die because of sin. He died to save you and to give you the power and dominion over the body and desire of sin. Are we here tonight? So it's not said sin, it's not said dead pass upon him because death reigned from Adam to Moses. Are we here? So that means people dying from sin, yes. And people die that did not commit sin, yes. What happened to them? Their history, you better get me, have come to a hand. Their purpose have been served. Do you get this? I just want to clear up some information. Can somebody praise God? Praise God. There are many folks, I believe this, that believe in their mind and in their spirit that God gonna take back the world in their season and give them a jump start to come back to him. You have it wrong. The world is heading to the end of this age. And when that come to a hand, is one group of person going to live and hurt. And those are the blood wash. Those are the saved people that give their life to Christ and kill the body of sin. So please, my brothers and sisters, don't believe that there is a jubilee day is coming back for you. That history of jubilee have been closed. Those days have been ended. Those time have been passed. The time that you now live into is a time that Paul is bringing the world to this question and asks us, shall we continue in sin? When we continue in sin, we continue in the natural nature and the natural lifestyle that we born to it and believe that God gonna bring back a table before you and fill it up with gold and fill it up with apple and fill it up with our finest fruit. You have the wrong mentality of God. The Bible is a historical book that is traveling. Get that in your mind. And the Bible goes through faces. And now we are at this face. We are at this place. And the place that we are at now is the day of the Lord. We are in the last day. Can somebody praise God? Jesus have opened up the last day for us. So don't look for the world to go back for you. Don't look for it to reverse for you. Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God may bomb God 
forbid it, it will not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We are going forward, my brothers and sisters. So don't let no lying spirit from the devil come cripple your mind that you don't get salvation now. There is not another day for salvation. I want you to get that in your mind. Jesus, give us the day now. He said, today is a day of salvation. Don't neglect it. Don't reject it, but accept it. My brothers and sisters, the world needs to know the truth. That it is ending, it is heading to the end. The world is heading to the end of all things that is taking place. And sin will be no more after this end come. So get that in your mind. So if you want to start a new world with God, you have to come to Christ right now. You have to leave those mentality and stop living historical event. They already happen if you know they are history. They are history. And you were not there in history to witness it, but you are reading your history. You are reading the great grandfather history and all the generation, generation history. How God worked through them. Do you know how God worked through them? God worked through them in the natural. God worked through them in the physical. And that failed men from come to God in cleanness and holiness. Get that in your mind. Those days are over. Those time have gone. So don't bother look and say that time is coming back for you. You better, you better, you better, you better think again. It will never return. Watch what, what, watch and listen what is real. Is this is real now. So you must baptize in the name of Jesus Christ into his death. Therefore, it's we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was risen, you don't like to hear the word risen, praise the name of the Lord. Then how you're going to save and how you're going to go in the new world. That Christ is your governor. Christ is your president. Christ is your minister. In all departments, his God is in charge. How you're going to reach there if the body of sin is not dead? How are you going to reach there if you don't baptize into the death of Jesus Christ? And likewise as Christ raised that you're going to raise out of that dead body. You are going to raise out of the body of sin that is haunting you right now. Are we here tonight? Our body haunts us a sin. The devil know how to allow your body to haunt you. Are we here tonight? And that's the body must, must lay to, 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 to death tonight. It must die tonight. Because you want deliverance, don't it? You want to be delivered from the sinful nature. From the sinful body. You don't like to hear me preach right? Because I preach about sin. Praise the name of the Lord. That's all what I know to preach about. I don't know to preach about not in him. I only call to preach sin and to God people. That need to repent. Have their sins and come to Christ. So you get it now. Are you still there with me? Well keep on. Sending your comments. Because we are going closer tonight. Don't worry. So you're going to raise with Christ from the dead. Up from the dead by the glory of his father. Christ is alive, get that? And because Christ is alive, you also raise. Do you get that? Yes. Because one man obedient give you life. One man disobedient give you death. And Christ came to rescue you out of that dead body that we have. Watch this. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. What type of life are we walking in? What type of life are we walking in? We cannot walk in the same sinful body 
and say that we are walking in a new life. We must walk in the body of the resurrected Christ. Can somebody praise God? That's the body you need to walk with. And I charge you tonight, get that body now before it is too late. Time is against us. Time is running. Time is sliding. Time, we have no control over it. Yes, it is sliding away from you. Jesus is coming. Let I remind you with that. That Jesus is coming. I want you to start to do this. If you don't baptize. And to Jesus Christ. Dead. Then you need to go back to a pastor. And ask the pastor. I want to baptize. And to the death of Jesus Christ. That I can be raised. As oh Jesus raised from the dead. And able to walk in the newness of life by the glory of God. You can do that tonight. And get your life back on track. Because that's the only way. You're going to be able to walk in newness of life. By doing the right thing. And do the things that God requires. To be done for us to be saved. Do you ready for this? Watch some more with me. Read some more with me. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death together, we shall be also in his likeness of his resurrection. You hear me start speaks about resurrection. Right? He's back to life. He come back to life with a brand new mission. Brand new body. Supernatural body. A body that does not subject to sin. A body that don't subject to death because sin, death comes from sin. But a body that is righteous and pure. And that's the body you need to wear tonight. That's the body you need to clothe in tonight. You don't have it, get it. Don't tell me you can't get it. Get it. Many things you want, you get it, right? You hunt it down and you get it. You want the body. You want the resurrection body to walk into. You want him to live in you. Then pursue after it and have it. You cannot escape the facts. Our salvation, our healing, and all what we can think about our Christian faith is based in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The pain that you have tonight, it only can be healed through Jesus Christ. The struggle and the confusion that you face and you have, the difficulty that you face in your life, only Jesus can make it right because you know why? He's sinless. He is sinless. And nobody that possesses will sin cannot make it right with you. Whoops. You are just going to fill up yourself with more destructive things and destructive elements. Get that in your mind. Nobody can set you at liberty that is not cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Get that in your mind. It's only Jesus alone because he's pure. Because he raised from the dead. He got the victory over death and hell. He got the power over sin and over the sting of the grave. And the victory over the grave. He defeated sin. In other words, he defeated death. And wake up to show us. This is what going to happen to us if we only believe and only be obedient and to accept Jesus, you will experience the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ in your life. Many of us, we are going to suffer until we come to the realization, come to the facts that Jesus lives. 
And we must destroy the body of sin for Jesus to come in. When we're here tonight, Jesus don't live on the external. The Bible said God is a spirit and that Jesus lives in us. And sin cannot be in us for Jesus to live in us. So if you are sinning, eh, let me take time to talk this. I talk loud. If you are sinning, your body have not been dead to sin. Your body have not been quickened by Jesus Christ. And you are not, you are not baptized unto the death of Jesus. So you could not raise with Jesus. And that's what happened to many of us. Yes. We baptize in water. But we never baptize unto his death. And we did not raise with him. Because you cannot raise with somebody when you were not buried with them. And Christian tonight. Those are your mystery. The need to be recognized in your life. You must bury with Christ. And to raise with him. You cannot look for resurrection. And you were not dead. Get that in your mind tonight. How can you look to be resurrected from the dead. And you were not dead. This. That don't sound so good, eh? You want to be resurrected, but you are not dead. Well, you must baptize unto the dead of Jesus and sin must die in you. Yes, and it's only when you dead, die, and shut up in the earth, resurrection will come. Are you ready for this? Have you swear allegiance to Jesus? Many of you right now are scared of what the world has to offer. Why are you don't scared that Jesus is coming and you are not saved? The world has to do what they have to do. And you have to do what you have to do. Stop worrying. Life goes on. People die and people live every day. Jesus is coming. That's the reality. That don't need to push under the carpet. Because you want to keep the dead body alive. You want to keep the body that is already dead alive. But Paul said you must dead to sin. Watch this. Are we walking in the newness of life? How are you going to get that you have to die first, then you're raised with Christ, then you can experience the newness of life? Somebody used to sing, I got a new life. How you got that new life? What you bury and how you bury. <laughs> I have many things to say. But I will not say them at once. How are you tonight? Many of us, we baptize under false pretense. Many of us baptize under false doctrinated baptism doctrine. And that's why it is very difficult for Christian today to reflect the power of the resurrection in their lives. Let us move on. Are we here tonight? Knowing this, that our old man, who is your old man tonight? That's Adam, your old man. The carnal, fleshly man. That reigned from Adam to Moses. And if you notice. There is no man come. As a savior. 
until Jesus turned up by the voice of John the prophet to prepare in the way of the Lord make his path straight change my brothers and sisters did you see that change coming you hear John with it but you never saw it coming so we have power tonight to live for Christ to live for God and death to sin, we have the power. Watch this. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Jesus took the Bible so that the word become flesh. And that's the kernel I want us to get it in our mind. Because many of us believe that Jesus was walking around with a spiritual body. In which a body that don't subject to sin, time, and death. He born the same sinful body that we born today. That we house in today. He have the same body. And he never crucify and leave it. Because that is a body that need to die. The body of sin need to die. And Jesus have it. He wear it. He dress it in the morning. He bathe it. And he put on his shoes in the morning. And he head out with the message of the kingdom of God. He's coming and this body is going down. Do you know that? You want to keep your body alive, right? Yes. You want to keep it alive. Jesus want his body dead. And he get his wishes. So he was crucified. Watch this. So the old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Do you see that? The body of sin that we house into. Jesus take that body because he have one for himself. And he were tested like us. He faced the opposition like us. He faced the valley like us. He faced the, 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 the mountain like us. He faced the desert like us. He faced everything that we face. But the good thing about Jesus, he defeats sin before sin defeats him. He defeats sin before sin defeats him. When the temper came to tempt him, he defeats the temper with the power. That exists in the word. The fasting is good. Because the fasting is getting his body under control. Getting his body to suffer. It. Get his body to feel the pain. Getting his body to reject everything that this sinful world have to offer. He get it. The fasting, he puts the 17 transgression to the ground. He push all the manifestation in the ground. And all what the sin body possess, he buried it in the ground. Can somebody praise God? And when he left out of that fasting, the temper come to chant what he did. And he used the word. And he used the word. What is your weapon tonight? The word. The word by faith. The body of sin is already destroyed. You're not going to destroy nobody's sin here. Somebody have done it for you. And the only way you can get the body. 
that you have now to be dead is to baptize into the dead of Jesus. Baptize into it and allow God to raise you up as he raised Jesus with a brand new mind, with a brand new body. He fight no more. You never know that. He fight no more. To live holy. Now he's living holy. When he were traveling he have to fight. He could not stop fight. He could not stop pray. He could not stop fast. He could not do, stop do nothing. Because the flesh. The flesh. Will grab him. And destroy him. And make certain he failed. But he hold on unto God. Fight the good fight of faith tonight. Never let go from of your God. Although the challenges is there. Although the system is working a purpose. Trust your God. Don't trust the system of this world. Trust your God to take you through this system. Are we here tonight? Are we here? Watch this. Watch this. Just watch this, my brothers and sisters. Just watch this. That the body might be destroyed. That henceforth, we shall not. You look at the word not. When I tell you, say you don't need to sin. Because you're the child of God. You open your eye wide. It, it could shut or open. It still does not change what the Bible required. So if you love to sin. You want to die as a sinner. Don't it? But if you want to live for Christ. Then listen and act now. Henceforth, because it destroyed by Jesus Christ, henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is what? Is free from sin. Keep your body dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't bring your body alive tonight. That is the biggest mistake that you are that you have gonna make in your lives. It, if the body dead tonight by the power of God, it's going to remain dead until Christ returned. Oh, somebody. If you ever try to bring it to life, you're going to die. Remember, I told you this. Remember, I told you this. The Bible said, No man has put his hand to the plow and turned back his feet for the kingdom of God. I'll be here tonight. So just remember tonight. If there is desire of sin in your lives, you did not bury with them. Holy Ghost, you keep it in that context. It don't matter how you feel. Feelings mean nothing here. It's reality means something. When the life of Christ is reflecting in you and you are experienced a dead appetite towards sin, that's the reality. That's not a mind game. You play with people and tell people I'm a Christian, I read Bible. The liars and the prostitute read Bible. The murderer, the shutters, they read Bible. So reading the Bible does not make it. What make it has to be raised from the dead with Christ. That's what make it. Do you get that now? Do you, do you get that? Yes, you get it now. So when that body is dead, you're free from sin. And that's why you have some folks out there. They understand my language. The only way you can be dead unless you do what the Bible said. Unless you give God your lives. And let Jesus get into you that body of sin will not dead. It will be alive. So this is what happened in the lives of the Christian. So Christian that is sinning you do I don't want to hear you. You're not a child of God. You get that in your mind. 
you get that in your mind because listen what the Bible said that henceforth we should not serve sin. So you're not going to be loyal to any sinful activities. When they come up to you, the Holy Ghost going to convict you of what is about to happen. The Holy Ghost going to bring you conscious and say this is coming up against you. You need to bring it down. You need to make a shout. You never know. That's why you need all of these things to be real in your lives. You cannot serve in God and you drop in a patrol. Do you get this? You cannot serve in a God and the ditch cut out and he let you fall in the ditch. He's going to show you the ditch and let you know that danger is at hand. Because he is the one that leading you. Not you walking by yourself. Can somebody praise God. And Jesus not going down anymore. He's up. Are we here tonight? He's not going through no valley anymore. He's up. Are we here tonight? Our buckles is not in the valley. Our buckles is in the heavens of heavens. Get that in your mind tonight. Your fight for your life is not in the valley. It's not on the mountain top. But it is in the heavens of heavens. Principalities and power in our places. Watch this. Now if if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Look at the benefit. Look at the good grace of God. Look at what is offered to the church. And church folks is not enjoying what the Bible teach. Can somebody praise God? You don't believe me, answer this and text me, let us see. Are you enjoying a sinless life? No. Listen what you said. My all is sin and come short of your glory. That was who you are before you reach Christ. That's where who you are initially. We are all sinners. Can somebody praise God? We are all prone to death and destruction. But Christ turned up and changed that around and give us life. And give us life. You find little scripture that the Bible speaks about. And you hold them at, at ransom. You hold them hostage. Because you don't want to change your life. You're going to die and go to hell. When you're going to change it, it will be too late. When mercy said no. You know when mercy said no? When you die. Are oh, we getting this? You must live sinless. And that's where we're going to drive until Christ come. Because that's what the Bible teach. The Bible doesn't teach that we should continue its sin. It said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That the goodness of God, the love of God be not in the Bible. I said, no, you don't have to continue in sin. You have to baptize in Christ. Death. Raise. As God raised him from the dead. And if you believe in this, if now if we dead with Christ, body of Christ died. Do you know that? Do you know when the body of Christ died? You don't know. The body of Christ died on that first 40 day fasting. It dies. The physical 
demonstration of satisfaction to the flesh is what you think that is on that day he died. That's why he loved the bond. But if Jesus was waiting that after they nail him to the cross, you will be still in your sin. Get that in your mind. And that's what to show you. You don't wait until that sentence pronounced upon you. Then he's trying to be saved. You have to be saved now. And that's why Jesus could tell his disciples. The prince of this world coming and he have nothing in me. He kill it all and that 40 days fasting as what the Bible teaches. And when he get over his 40 days the temple come to challenge the flesh. Now the spirit you know, get that in your mind is the flesh and if you look at the three temptation, it is all about satisfaction of the flesh. The flesh was dead. No life were in the flesh. So when the devil come, Jesus have to spit out the spirit. He just got to reel out the spirit things because the flesh is dead. And the devil know that the flesh is dead, but he's, he's trying to say if he can pump life, he can render some first aid. Are some CPR. That's what they call it. He want to do some CPR on Jesus. But Jesus let him know. Man shall not live by bread alone. So the flesh just dead. I'm not going to satisfy it with anything. In this world to live. My brothers and sisters. And you know that. All the food that you eat. You're still hungry. You're still hungry. <laughs> Jesus have killed that. Jesus have buried it. So Jesus, I want us to get revelation because there are many times we miss revelation. Jesus lived for his resurrection. <laughs> Somebody. I said Jesus prepared himself for his resurrection. And many of us don't know that you just believe that Jesus just died and he just raised so from the dead. No, he will be still in there. If he never prepare for his resurrection, he will still be in there and rotten in there and we still be in our sins. Somebody praise God, you missed me right there. That's new to you. Many things gonna new to you. There is a virus that is new to us and they said you're gonna live with it. You're going to pray to die to God. No, I sure you want to live. Are you here tonight? So there are many things you're going to live with. There are many words you're going to live with. Every day you wake up, you're going to hear it. Coronavirus. Every day on the news, you hear it. You want to die because of coronavirus? No, I want vaccine. I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to live. Just as how you want to live, for the vaccine in this world, you need to pursue after Christ to live in the other world to come. You're going to line up in line for vaccine just to satisfy the flesh, right? And to satisfy this world. Why don't line up in line to get Jesus' approval? To get your stamp to get your vaccine of the Holy Ghost in you that will be able to guide you through this world. Why don't line up for it? <laughs> Let me move on. Just remember something that I said tonight. That Jesus lived for his resurrection. And many of us is, is living in sin and want the resurrection of Christ experience after the day arrive, which is judgment, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Remember the man in St. Luke. It never happened for him. 
Jesus Christ is the first fruit from the dead. So it's not going to happen unless you live and prepare yourself for your resurrection. Then the, the spirit of holiness from the Father will wake you up on the last day. Do you ready for this? You better start live good. Are we here tonight? If Jesus should live like all we are living, we wouldn't have the Savior tonight. You never know. Because we is a flip-flop Christian. We, we just flip so. Flip-flop. We are not stable in our belief in God. This moment you become a Christian because a fresh cold is passing and somebody says you might catch coronavirus. And you start to pray. You start to chop down healing scriptures. What some person will tell you. You could read. I want to put this in your mind. And undo the thoughts. A person that is influencing you. To be a Bible reader. But not a Bible doer. You could read all the healing scriptures that they said is in the Bible, you will never be healed. You only can be healed when you touch Jesus by faith. So get that in your mind. Only believe when all things are possible for you. You could read them, all of them, you still is going to die. Jesus is the one that gives life. And you need to have him tonight. Are you getting my understanding tonight? Watch this. This is why I become what I become because of God. And I don't believe in storytelling. I believe only what God believes into. And share it with you. God wants you to live good because he's a holy God. And I'm not going to crop up things and tell you and let you believe you're going to heaven. You're not going to go. Unless the body of sin have been dead in you. That you serve it no more. Watch this. Verse 10. We have time for 14, so don't worry. You're going nowhere. You're under curfew, right? That's the order. Curfew starts at 2 o'clock. You have to lock in your house. Can you run out of your house and do as you like? No. The authority grab you. So why you don't be loyal to Jesus? The same way. And come to Jesus. And said, sin, goodbye. Desire, goodbye. Pleasure in it, goodbye. We sing this song so much. But we cannot demonstrate and live it. In his praise, there is fullness of joy at his right hand. There are pledges forevermore. There are pledges, my brothers. Oh, what fellowship! Divine, I am his and he is mine in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy. Holy Ghost, somebody praise God with me one more time. In his presence, I'm challenging you tonight. You don't have to allow the there flesh to bring joy. that pleasure to you. God have better and greater right pleasure for you hand. that you don't have to sin. You don't have to sin. But you can live oh, in all happiness and all goodness. Divine of the Lord. Reach out to your hands and touch him tonight. You want to be delivered. You want to be free. 
presence of step into his presence the lord there's fullness of joy thank you thank you thank you and we're here tonight watch this knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death of no more dominion over him. He got the victory. He won it. How did Jesus have done this? He believed in his father's word. He believed in what the Father gave him to do. He was sent here to prove to humanity that you can live a holy life in a sinful body. The Word became flesh. What type of flesh? Adam fall in race flesh. The sinful flesh, he put it on. But when he suit up in it, he kill it. When he come to age, he slew it. Are we here tonight? He bury it. And he rise in the spirit. Now we're here tonight. And he got the victory. Live for God tonight. Live for God tonight. And you will die no more. You're going to die once. Because it appointed unto man once to die. But after death grab you. Right? You shall live again. So you're just gonna knock through one door. Can somebody praise God? The door mark death. And as you open it and pass through it and, and shut it back, you see a door mark life everlasting. Life domination. Which one you're gonna enter in? Your life that you live will lead you to your door. Can somebody praise God? I said the life that you live gonna lead you to your door. Because although the two door is there, you cannot enter life if you never live for life. Get it in your mind. You see how close it is? You close one door behind you and eternity is right in front of you and two doors before you. As what the Bible said, there is two way. The broad way and the narrow way. And many shall choose the broad and a few shall choose the narrow. When death arise, the righteous will see a glorious Christ calling them home. Come. And when you live for sin and open the torment, not the devil, the torment and abominable things and the way how you live gonna call you, come. This is where you belong. Or we hear somebody just watch this. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Do you get that in your mind? Watch this. Likewise, that means Christ have done it. Christ becomes our example. My brothers and sisters, look at Christ in the flesh as you. And he received the same spirit of God like you. 
it sat upon him like many of us. Why cannot we obey God? If he's God, rest in you. So those are things you need to question his son. What type of spirit rests in me? If it is spirit of God. Paul make it clear what spirit he wants. And Paul always write. And I like the spirit that he's pursuing. He said I want to know Christ. By the power of the resurrection. Any power that wake up Christ. I want to experience it. Did you get that? Do you get that? And if you are led by the Spirit of God, remember the Spirit of God? You are the sons and daughters of God. So get that in your mind. So don't allow just spirits to lead you. You need to know your spirit. That's why James said to try the spirit. See, if it is of God. So watch this. So likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead. Do you get this? Do you have feelings for sin? When the devil comes up with you, all you want to hear that the Spirit of God raises standing. You have to live for the Spirit of God to raise the standard. Everything that the Bible teaching us, you have to live it to experience it. It is not going to automatically come up in you. It's just like God said, he loves every one of us. But we have to choose to serve him. To experience that love that he said he had. Don't it? But you want the spirit of God to come in, to, to when the devil come in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises the standard. You want to experience that, right? You have to live for it. You're going to live for it, right? Then you will experience it. So one thing you need to do tonight, reckon your body dead. See the things, let I make it clear to you, see the sinful things and you lose your appetite. There are many times we lose appetite for many food that we used to eat. You just don't want it no more. Because of the stage of your body, your mind, and your soul, you have no more desire and passion for that food. Now we must live in Christ that our body become dead to all the 17 transgression of the flesh and all the implication and manifestation of each dynamic force that travails and travel through our body. Can somebody say our body? You believe that people put demon in you, right? Hmm? Where do you think the devil lives? In you. In you. And he only can be active in you if the flesh is alive. But if the flesh die. He disperse out of you. Because Christ is in you. Are we getting that now? So watch this. So reckon your body dead unto sin. Indeed. Unto sin. But lived. That means we must come alive. We must come conscious. Unto the things of God. And pursuing only the things that please God. I want to tell you this. Because many of us miss me there. God wants you to have a house. He don't want you to sleep on the street or on a stone. He wants you to have all the goodies. That there is for the human satisfaction. But he wants you to get it to him and from him. And not from our sinful desire and appetite. Because that desire and appetite leads to death. But the things that you're going to pursue, 
you are not going to attach them to you because you have no desire to attach it unto you because you cannot attach anything to anything that dead. Over here. Why there is so many attachment on us? It's because our body is alive. <laughs> Do you get that? I'm not going to explain all that. Okay, you know that there is a lot of attachment that attach to you. If you notice, what attached to a dead body? Nothing. Then one piece of clothes are a nighty for the girls then or whatever but just piece of fabric that your skin to the um, health protocol you cannot expose the dead are we here are we here so there is no attachment to the things that is dead because it need life to survive. And when you reckon your body dead to sin, no sin cannot attach to you. Because your body is dead. Do we get that clear now, my brothers and sisters? Attach to Christ. And you will feel alive. And all you will have is the desire to serve him until you die. Let we take some more. To live unto God. How are you going to live unto God? You can't get away. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So all things done through Jesus Christ our Lord. The one that conquered it for us. To him. Do you get that clear? We don't have to do much, much explaining and that. Watch this. My brothers and sisters, pay me some attention now. No time for you to go to sleep. Because you're not sleeping from 2 o'clock. You're cooking your dinner and you're watching television. And it's up and your social media, right? Still stay in social media. Now, one listen to this. And for all my Christian folks that play in church, I want you to listen. And for those that listen and want to come to church, I want you to listen to. Verse 12. Romans 6, verse 12. Let not sin reign. Let, let not sin therefore reign. In your mortal body. This is your mortal body. Don't allow sin to control us. That we must commit sin before the week change. We must commit sin before the month change. We must commit sin before this happen and that happen. I must. Don't allow it to have control over you anymore. So listen how Paul describing it. This is your mortal body. Jesus did possess it too. If you never know, watch this. That's why they could kill him. Because his body were mortal. Man, oh you hear somebody. All right, watch this. Let not therefore sin reign in your mortal body that he should obey it in the lust thereof. The lust. Everything carry a lust before it happen. Every sin and things which is not sin, we lust after it first. But we make it sin because of the lust. 
that we associate with it. So my brothers and sisters, we are in trouble. As a child of God that lusts after things before you purchase it, it is sin. Are we here? It's the flesh lust after the things to satisfy the flesh. Watch this. Where each man? Nature heal your member as instrument of unrighteousness. Your members that is in you. Every organ that is in you. Don't let the devil use it like an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. So he's going to use it and the ultimate finish goal of it is sin. Don't allow it, I charge you tonight. Don't allow sin to reign in your body that you obey it in the last day of. Neither heal your member as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but heal yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Do you see our challenge that we face? Do you see the difficulty that we face? And you believe that you can live as you like and go to heaven. You can't. Look at this. The guidelines that is given unto us. Heal yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Who is alive from the dead? Jesus. No other Jesus is that in your mind. And you remember as instrument of righteousness unto God. So the same word used for unrighteousness and the same word used unto righteousness. Choose tonight who you're going to heal your body to. I'm not going to tell you. You need to make that decision in yourself. For sin shall, but the word shall not. So when you are sinning as a child of God, just remember Romans 6 and verse 14 will give you a word that will remind you Something I've missing in my life. Why I am sinning. Why I am going through turmoil of sin infested me. Watch this. For sin shall not have dominion. And you know the word dominion, what it means. Authority and power over you. You know that sin come on many of us to do it. To do what act he present before us. Because he's not going to present it as anything wrong. He's not going to write the word sin when you finish. He's going to write pleasure all the way to success. And the blessing and favor will be upon you. All you have to do just comply. And we comply. And we sin against God. But has one. That reckon his body unto God. Has those. That are alive from the dead as Jesus Christ. And you yield your member. Your, as instrument unto righteousness unto God. Sin will not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law. You know why? The body subject to the law. 
without the law, sin will not be imputed on any man. So because of the grace of God that bring change to our liberty and our lifestyle and the body that subject to sin is dead. Get that in your mind because many of us think this to commit all type of law breaking and say that the Bible is say that the Bible does not teach it that way. The body that Christian must possess is the body that is dead. And once your body is dead, the law have no power and no more dominion over you because you're dead. Let us use this as an example. When a murderer, a serial murderer, he's killing off people. Everybody freed. But when he died, he free from the law. When he died, society give God praise. When he died, you rejoice. But the law cannot lock him up anymore. The law cannot take him to court anymore because he's dead. And he's, and he's not guilty of any more crime. So death free him from the law. That's what Jesus brought unto her. He free your body from the law of destruction and death. That you don't have to serve sin that lead to death. So I never tell you, don't obey the law of the Lamb. He did not say that. So because, watch this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Because what your body is dead. For ye are not under the law. So now God pull out your body from under the law. And give you a brand new body. That is resurrected. That you are living in Christ. We are in Christ. Have not subject to the law. Of sin and death. Because he died once. Are we here now? Do you get that clarity now? So just because. Your body. Is reckoned dead. I have to recite it. Then the sin of no more dominion. Over the dead body. Because it dead. The law lead to death. Sin Leads to death. Let I correct that. The law identify your deeds that you're guilty of death. Did you get that now? So when you're already dead, you're free from the law. Get the reality. You're free from the law when you die. If your whole building cannot come in the, in the cemetery, come lock you up. They cannot write you a letter and send bay leaf to you to take you to your coffin. You is dead. They cannot demand nothing from you. You are not under the law anymore. You are under debt. That bound you forever and ever. So listen now. We are under grace. The goodness of God. That's what we are living into. And I need to preach the grace of God. That some people will get the clarity. Because some people is mixing up the law here and the grace here and believe that Jesus is telling his people you must not obey the law of the land. That's a lie. I repeat it again. That's a lie. Remember, Jesus does not come to fulfill a physical structure life. He come to fulfill a spiritual structure life and to free men that have been trapped by the law have sin and death out of that body. So get that in your mind. So when Jesus, praise God, has freed you from your body, you have and the grace. So sin don't have no power and rights over you anymore to tell you 
and whisper in her ears, oh, you can tell a lie. He's talking to her dead. Right, pastor, that's so hard. It's so hard, right? You stop right? Well, let me stop talking then. So God bless you tonight. And may God keep you so I stop talking now so you can write, amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law. Paul said he did not know sin until the law turned out. So sin were in the world and it were not inputted on any man because there was no law to bring you to justice and to identify you that you are a sinner, you are a liar, you are a murderer. Describe your crimes out and give it a name. What Jesus is saying, I free you from that dictator. I free you from that law that points his finger in your face and said that you are a murderer. You are a liar. You are a thief. And you are guilty of death. Jesus said now. I free you. You can walk. In this world. With. A sinless body. Reckon it dead tonight. And you will experience the power. Of Christ. Of a wonderful night. And God bless you. Bless you all tonight. Cover your people out there in Radio Land tonight. Let this word reach to their heart and to their core and my heart and my core too and my family and everyone that listens to this podcast. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. No. <laughs>